So uh, again, I, I'll, I'll go back and talk a little bit about my uh, career, how I came from academia, what was my career in academia and how I moved to industry. And definitely this is, this is a open forum to discuss. Um, you can ask any question you have in mind and that will help um, you and me to understand what, what are you looking for and how I can um, share my experience. Uh, we'll be very open to all of you to discuss all the steps what I took during the career and move from academia to industry. So again, um, right now I'm a senior director. Um, my background is basically in immunology and I have been doing lots of immunology in my PhD and, and um, in my academia, a basic immunology to understand T cell signaling and other component of immune system. But um, I moved to a task national immunology or I would say that um, more in industrial setup in 2017. And before 2017, I'm going to share with my uh, next slide, please, Philip. Um, so uh, my master and PhD both are from India and I uh, completed my master in 2002 uh, from Department of Biotechnology, Punjab University is in Chandigarh, Northern part of India. And then I did my PhD in the same city, Chandigarh and PGIMR, which is Postgraduate Medical Institute. And, and then I moved um, uh, in 2008, I moved to uh, United States uh, for postdoc. I, I can tell you uh, when we are in the basic science in, in uh, back, if you look back and think about your yourself, your career, um, there was a time I can tell you I, will, I had an impression if I go to United, United States and do a postdoc, I will be novel negative. I will be honest to talk about that. That was like high expectation of my career. And everybody think about, it. I don't know what you think about it, but yes, um, once you don't go into the reality, what is the real world look like? You have a high expectation. And that was my goal of uh, understanding at some point, oh, I'm going to get like use nature publication and all these things, um, big, big thinking. Uh, it's not bad, I will, I'll tell you, it's not bad. That, that is one thing will motivate you to understand where. But you know, there is a point you have to make a decision and it's a very important, who is the driver? You are the driver of your career, nobody is. I'm, I'm sharing my experience, but that doesn't mean I'm going to uh, convince you to go in one direction or other. It's your decision, you are the driver, you are on the driver's seat but it's important to find out using GPS, which path is a good path to go to your destination. So I might be your GPS to understand how I use my career from my PhD to uh, this point. Uh, next slide, please, Flip. So uh, that was, I uh, had a few publication, but came in United States and, and, and for postdoctorals. And, and you can see almost two, two complete postdoctoral and then third, I have a postdoctoral plus a research assistant or say faculty position in academia. And, and those changes, I can tell you, few people stay a long term in, in postdocs, few people stay only two to three years. And I think that that is one thing I was missing in, in my career as well, to have a, a strong decision what I want to do. And when that should be coming, that should be coming in the earliest stage of the career development because you can recognize yourself what you want to do. And it's very important. And the reason I'm going to tell you that why it's important, I spent almost eight years in postdoc. Is that is that um, good number of time like I, I spent? Yes, it's a huge amount of time you are ex spending somewhere to find out what do you want in your career. As I said that you are the driver, you have to decide which path you want to go. But, you know, during those postdocs, I learned lots of things. And now I feel like, although it was eight years of postdocs plus faculty, but 
what I got from academic research is helping me right now to build myself and career progress. And you will see my fast career progression in industry is because of those time I spent in academic research and got lots of knowledge. So the things didn't come served in the plate. Like here is here is your uh, progress. Here is a, it. It it, it it was a dedication. It was a time I spent. But some people are smart enough, and they they get very fast um, development from academia to um, in academia or go to industry. So this is again you have to make a decision. You want to stay in academia. How is your career look like? Because nowadays, even getting a um, grant is not easy. So, and there are several options. One of them is industry. And there are other options as well, like not being just a faculty or research. Um, people do start their own company or there are other aspects like consulting, um, scientific writer, there are different components. So you have to make decision. What do you want? Uh, can we go next slide, for you, please? So, and then uh, what happened? Um, I was really, really good um, doing everything good. Good publications were coming from academia. Um, 2012, uh, in the last slide, if you saw that, I moved to Georgia Cancer Center and worked with Dr. Samir Khalif. He's, he's a really good scientist. and. Um, a good mentor taught me several things. Before that, I was doing basic immunology, but he said um, there was a my present. I had a presentation in Sitsi um, in 2012, and he said, "Hey, um, can we can we talk a little bit?" And we talked together, and um, he said that um, we are building a good team of immunologists. But my goal is to go in cancer immunology. Are you interested in moving to cancer immunotherapy, immunology? And then I joined his lab, I worked for uh, five years with him, and I still wanted to work, stay in academia. Um, but he was moving to Georgetown University from Georgia. And I thought, okay, I've been working enough in academia. It's a time for me to make a decision whether we want, I want to stay in academia or go into the industry. So, finally decided to go in industry and went five plant therapeutics as a scientist three. And then I worked with a few company, five plant therapeutics, uh, worked for two years. There was a layoff, um, although I was not a part of layoff, but uh, the goal of five plant was to merge with uh, MGen. Now there is no five plant, five plant got bought by MGen. And then, um, I joined Sutro Biopharma and then uh, Kite. Uh, eventually, I'm now with uh, um, Precision in, in Maryland. And one of the goal was to move to East Coast because I have a friend and family there who wanted to move out from Bay Area, so I moved there. But again, in industry um, came from very strong scientific background and um, industry people really respected that. and. I, Few people have a, a really um, different concept in, about the industry that there is no research in industry. It's a cycle of work and everything. I, I, I can tell you that's wrong um, perception because again, in industry, when you are opting a job, you need to find out what you want to do. There is a research, there is a development, there is a, a different component of industry research as well. And my, my interest was in vivo because I, I wanted to understand how immune cells are behaving uh, when you have a drug in vivo. And that's why I moved to in vivo. And you can see uh, during my career um, in industry, I have been 100% involved in in vivo. And then um, from bench to uh, leadership, how did I make a transition? It's, it's your decision as well and your managers, you need to talk to them what you are looking for. Few people um, stay in industry and are still working on the bench for next 10 years and become like principal scientists, senior principal scientists. There are different um, kind of uh, work you can do in industry. I 
stop going on bench and in uh, i think uh, uh, kite pharma when i moved to gilead kite pharma then i stopped going on the bench i started working with my scientist and associate scientist and at this point i have a two associate director and two scientists and i recently hired a scientist she just finished her phd and during interview she was very clear i want to go industry now and i can tell you what is the benefit when you make a decision just after phd or early postdoc your growth my growth is like if you look at my postdoc uh, my phd 2008 now we are in 2022 um 22 so almost uh, 13 14 years right so few people who can join and industry after phd can grow faster if if you are if you thinking that you are capable of doing writing grants raising funds stay there if you like that kind of culture but what i'm trying to say make early decision what do you want from your career and it's a very important and then uh, next slide flip so uh, again that that is my career but beside my career i have a family uh, my wife you can see in, in first picture me and my wife and second picture my daughter i like hiking uh, around san francisco now i'm doing in in maryland as well bike riding and going out with with friend and family it is my hobby so i'm enjoying my a uh, personal life as well as career um it's a very important i can tell you mental health is 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 most important thing you should be considering and that is what decide your career and mental health because you know if you are not enjoying your job if you're not enjoying your life you won't be doing good in your, your career as well so it's it's a balancing i can tell you it's very important to have a balancing between your um personal life and and work life so um that was my introduction again uh during my career you have seen that i have a lots of strong decisions uh moving and leaving a job joining other job so everybody like i had a fear in myself as well if i go next step next company what will be thing like and and everybody has that um fear uh, inside like what to do but you have to kill that fear you have to make a decision that what you want and and that fear help you to develop yourself uh killing that fear help you to develop yourself otherwise if you get cozy with one thing and you get a fear that oh i don't want to try another thing i'm happy here um if you are happy that's a good thing but if you don't want to try anything you won't get that one even there is a saying that um you have to go um um mosque you have to go temple or or church to ask god what you want so uh, it's not coming like you say i want this and it's coming you have to go and ask you have to ask yourself um I think I had enough introduction but I will open for question discussion and and any example you want any stage of my life as I said that I will be very open because I have gone through all those steps and I know how that feels like to a person um for everyone so please feel free ask me question whatever you have well before people I going to make a quest first so i mean was was the turning point that you decide okay i don't going to continue in the academia and uh, i going to move on because how you said you are following all the pathway to stay in the academia you are already in the faculty pathway yeah how was nice like question. the turning nice question philip i give you an example um a short example i've been using that example for even for my family me and my wife talk about that example to few people um a story a, star, a small story um uh, there was a saint uh, two saints were going through uh, uh traveling through a wood area and there was a, a land and wood and it was dark and that saint thought like those saint thought uh, let's have a, a, a stop and find someone who can give us um 
overnight stay and they found a small house and say hey, they went there and asked them can we stay overnight with you and they they agreed and both of them stayed with the person there and they got food and everything of for overnight bed to sleep but during the food saints asked those person um the owner how do you survive here what is the resource of your uh, income resources said i have a two, two three buffalo and we get a good amount of milk and we go and sell it in market so and we are surviving so next morning uh, those sense ask uh, one sense ask other kill all the buffalo and he said oh, are you crazy why are you asking me to kill them uh, this is the resource for their survival how, how could you do that he said no no kill it and they did they poisoned them and they left um three years after three years they came back to see how they are doing and they saw a big house a mansion and everything was great you know, um and they knocked the door and they said oh you are the same guy who killed my buffalo um and, and uh, so the other extent asked well how did that happen what what is it then they tell that told them the thing we had a good land around a very fertile land and we never thought that we can do some other things rather than depending on the buffalo so you have to think about the resources you have to kill your thinking that you are comfortable what you are doing you have to find there are resources around it post doc is not the only thing you should be thinking about think about what is your life same thing happened to me i was a scared to go company as well and and i was thinking i don't know what is what is that and how did that come i talked to few people and and my wife was is she said that if you don't apply it now we are still be in in um this um, position post docs for next 5 years what do you think you have the capability you have everything let's let's move on and we discuss two three components came in that i had a fear honestly speaking strong fear that maybe i'm taking the wrong decision it turned out really good and and there, that's that's what i always give an example you need to kill that buffalo inside of yourself to find other resources not just become cozy that i'm happy there are development and think about examples around good scientists good researchers came through that post doc phd program and they are there don't feel like you are not capable of anything everybody is capable of doing something great just feel your strength and do it and that is what i did shamin was in the first uh, years like when you moved uh how was like the most difficult for you what was more like different because you have a routine like by years and uh, what was more challenging for in the first years so Being when i moved from yeah that that when i moved from uh, academia in academia i had a big big team uh, i think we had a phone call also with you when i was in academia um, correct me if i'm wrong I, maybe I, so um had a big team and and um i was really enjoying that the feeling if you remember i said novel laureate i want to become and i was publishing good paper like not uh, that nature paper didn't come when i was in a uh, academia but uh, cancer research and cancer immunology research a good good impact factor journal and that was one thing i was missing when i went to uh, industry that okay i'm going to miss that the publication the knowledge the information and and uh, recognition definitely recognition um and and but when i went industry the culture of industry passed all all those thinking because it was a really great culture people were so friendly 
because there is a no me word in the industry. It's a we, and there's a no fighting of public publications and everything. So culture was really different, and I, I thought I made a good decision because as as I said that mental health is very important, and that is what I got when I went to uh, industry. You won't believe that when I was in academia, there were situation when I was taking my lunch kit, I used to forget my spoon and fork and, because, you know, my mind was yes. occupied yes. every time. Now I feel like I'm, I'm like very happy with my achievements. And you can see people do have that question also. And maybe you, somebody will ask that. My growth in industry every year is the next level. How is that happening? But I can, I can talk that as well, but now I feel like I'm more productive. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm more, more um, valuable than I was in, 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 in academia. That doesn't mean to everybody. I can tell you, I was not good in writing um, all the articles, everything, grants. So I, I think that made me like, I'm not capable of that. I knew that I'm not capable of raising money. Already, so I moved here. Uh, Edward uh, sent a sent a question in the chat. I don't know if we can I can read it here. In maintaining the metaphor of the killing the buffalo, how did your family, particularly wife, um, and kids, help you make the transition to industry? How did they make it harder? Good question. Okay, that's a very very important question. And again, I can I, I've been showing you everything. My family has been driver, and. And my wife, especially because she's also a PhD scientist, mm. so she knew that um, the, what is what is what is the career look like for us. She said she was also public the several publications. She said we are not going in this field. We are not going to achieve a professorship soon or later. It will be a difficult based on our capability, based on our publications, a standard, PIE support, all this component was there. And she said, you need to figure out if you want to move. And the reason, because my immunology background, cancer immunotherapy background, and the idea was really demanding. She said, you try first and go ahead. And if you find it, then it will be good. And my daughter, she was very happy because told you I was not able to give time um, when I was in, in academia. And it's not everywhere. I'm not giving you an example, uh, like general, uh, people are happy. They enjoy both. There are some lab they do, but in my case, it was different. So family was very supportive, very supportive. And when we came here, um, San Francisco from Georgia, Georgia, we had a mansion, a big house, very big house. But here we started our life in a small two bedroom condo. A big transition, right? Yes. My daughter was telling me one day, oh, we start in my room and we finished in a two minutes. Like there is nothing. Like you start in living room, there is nothing out there. And we had like, we had to call sometime in that house if somebody is up here, hey, can you come down here? So that kind of thing. So it was big shift. But you know, over the year, I now I feel like that was a good decision because a small um, resistance, a small um, conditions that we we went through made us feel better mentally, physically, and all all these things came out really good. So, so eventually I'm, we are very happy now. Overall, like you, you, your family was really supportive, yeah? They were really supportive, yeah. The other question here uh, from Jocelyn is, how hard was to find the first job in the industry? How did you prepare for that job search? Yes, um, very nice question, Jocelyn. very nice question, because it's, it's, it's difficult um, um, to hire someone from the academia. And 
I'm breaking that rule because you, I can tell you, let me, let me go answer first question, how hard it was. It was hard. And how do we approach? You need to connect with people. Connect with people, tell them that how capable you are. If your CV goes through the proper channel, it's a difficult because there is a scrutiny art level, but you need to connect with someone. I am hiring everybody from academia because I came from that background and I know those people are really, really good scientifically. As a leader, my role is to merge them in that condition. And that's what I'm doing, bringing people from academia to there. It was a difficult for me to get the job. I had a few interviews with Genentech and big company, and they were just asking that you don't have industry experience, although your background is strong. So I went through the smaller companies and it took me some time to get into it. But once you are there, you are there. Then I, every day I get an email that we have position in industry, can you join it, can you? It's a difficult transition and the right way is to reach out a few people related to your work. Like somebody is a cancer immunotherapy, I'm happy to talk to them and help them as well. If you have a good background, I'm happy to talk. And, and I post in, uh, there is a group called STEM peers, like it's a called, it's a group of um, postdocs and, and est, est from different, different uh, background. I post my position there. All of them is from, most of them I would say is from um, academic background. I post my position there because I want to help in that transition. The right way is to reach out to people of your friend and they do respond. Don't think that if I reach out to them, Philip, reach out to me. I don't know Philip, I never met. He reached out to me, I responded like, okay, I'm happy to talk uh, postdocs there. And same thing, people do respond, reach out to them. That would be the best way. Great. Another question here from Claire. Uh, have you seen a difference in how scientists advance get promoted based on their postdoc training? Do you see a difference between industry postdocs, academic postdocs, and non-postdocs PhDs in industry? Good question. Very good question. So it's it's your experience, they don't care. But your experience, how you are utilizing it, they do care. Right? Okay. You did 10 years of research, and then you are spending 10 more years to do something. Yes. They won't be, but those tenure for research, if you can utilize in six months and show them what you are capable of doing, they will recognize it. You can see my career and that career is because I, I can give you an example. I had an interview with someone and uh, he said that, how come like your development every year is going that fast? I said, Okay, let me ask you, somebody can learn a thing in 10 years, somebody can learn a thing in one year, who do you want? One year or 10 years? So how do I, I learn in faster? And why I learn in faster? Because I had experience background with that. So that helped me to learn faster. Now coming to the postdoc from industry, as I said that, I had a PhD, a girl joined, a scientist PhD girl joined me. She just finished PhD and joined me. When I was talking to her, her career path, she was very clear. If I spend two years in postdoc, three years in postdoc, and I decide, okay, I won't go further in academia and I go industry, I'll go as a senior scientist. Now I join now, in three years, I will be senior scientist as well. So path is a similar, but extra postdoc can give you an advantage of deciding the path. If you are confused, so it will help you whether you are still want to continue with postdoc and faculty position 
or you want to go to industry. If you already have a decision in mind, I want to go industry, don't spend your time for two more years to postdoc. Go industry, you will have a faster growth. Industry looks on industry experience. If they are hiding how long you've been in the industry. But if you feel like you are capable of writing grant and raise some fund and all this thing, go for postdoc. That's a good option. Is that is that making sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank and, you. Uh, about the CV, something like that always is difficult for us because generally with this postdoc you, you uh, do the CVs based on the normal research. Uh, how do you, do you have some tips that you can give us like what the industry looks, uh, how you should approach that? Oh, you mean CV? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Keep it simple. A simple, if you are applying a company who is good in cancer immunotherapy. Why would I care you engineered antibody? Why would I care you did uh, um, lots of bioinformatics? All I care, you are bringing your experience in cancer immunology or immunology or cancer biology. When you are applying, focus on that. Don't write wrong thing right thing, write a right thing on the CV, which is you have in yourself matching with that job, rather than making poster presentation, award, I don't care how many award you get, because it's good that you got the award, but what you are bringing to company is your expertise in that area, particular area. And that is what need to be done in one to two page CV. Very precise. If I have a question, I'll interview you and go details what award you got in that, and that will matter. But in initially, CV should be simple, representative, and match with the job description rather than putting too many things. Think about you go in a store, you see lots of things, you get unfocused, like where we should go, where we start. But if you go in a store, you know that what you want to buy, you go in that particular aisle and get that stuff from there. When I go uh, Lowe's or, or Home Depot, I look on my app and see which aisle and which, which row it is. And I go there and get that product. Otherwise it takes time to move, move, yes. find out. Like, that's a good example to understand how focused you need to be uh, in writing the CV. You think like the focus is the most important in this case, yeah? Exactly, exactly. And like, do you think when you address, because like you said, for you, you are in, in cancer, like you have many options already because of your background. But let's see someone, for example, work with yeast or work it, things like it's not like that you can see clear, you know, a position in the industry. How do you think for this person that has this background could approach, do you know what I mean? Well, people do transition, I can tell you. And, and uh, I have an example in my family, my wife. She was a PhD in biochemistry cancer biology. And now she is, in business development. So huge change, huge right? Different. Yeah. Huge change. So it took some time to get her into it, but she was like, determined, I want to do this. She approached people, it took some time. She got basic experience of doing that thing. Mm -hmm. A small, small training, a small courses and put in the CV showing her interest to go into the mm -hmm. that particular area. And then it represented in CV that she started thinking. So basic level entry into the industry. And then she got again in two, three years, now she is a business manager. Mm -hmm. So again, you as I said in the starting, you are the driver. You need to decide which way you want to go. Okay, you have to, put the address in the GPS. Where do you want to go? 
to put that address, you need to do a little bit of research where are you going. And to develop yourself, you are capable of driving to that point. That, that would be my suggestion. Yes, some people do change their career path. But if you want to stay in the same path and go industry, it will be challenging. Uh, because for example, there are only few company, uh, they are right now doing several other things like neurology disorder and, but there are company, you can see the market. Now people are doing lots of gene therapy. Mm -hmm. Everybody in postdoc do the cloning. Yeah. MRNA, SHRNA. Why do you think that even if you are doing that, yeast, even if you are doing fungus, LG, that's a, just an example. But mm -hmm. the basic technique you are developing in yourself is gene editing, gene engineering. Even if you do cancer, anywhere. So use that as your highlight. I am expert in doing gene editing. Don't say I'm expert in doing gene editing in the yeast system. Mm. That's just a exactly. So that that is what I would suggest. Postdoc, we learn everything. I won't say um, we don't know thing. We learn everything. In industry, become a little more focused. My role is only in vivo. Mm -hmm. There is a people that do in vitro. There is a people. There are teams that do biologics, our team, they develop drug. So four, five different component we work together. It get more easier to get more focus. But in postdoc, you learn all the component. Right? So I mean, do you think, it, how is the industry now after these things happens with COVID? Do you think it's like a, a good uh, moment for the postdoc to wanna move or how is your thinking about that? Yeah, so, uh, this is this is a really stressed condition for everyone. Yes. Every, I would say, uh, I can tell you, I have a, uh, a house still in Georgia, and that person sent me an email yesterday. I didn't put the rent. Uh, any concern? I said no concern. Everybody is going through a very critical stressed condition. Everyone. And this is condition where we need to come on together. Postdocs position as well. I have seen um, funding is not coming that much and people are getting hurt. But as I said that you need to kill the buffalo at some point, think about other resources. Where do you want? Uh, what do you want from your career? That's a very important decision to make. And, and I, I can tell you, um, industry job, research is not only things. There are several, several things you can do. Don't think that your background is in science and you want to just do science. You can do any kind of business as well. It's, it's just what we learned during my, our career is a discipline mm -hmm. of doing something uh, and, and, and understanding. So we have we had a bad situation in industry also, several industry layoff people. And that's one thing I definitely want to communicate with all of you as well, that it's not that you industry, you have job that you are settled. Nothing is settled. You can get layoff because your drug is failed in the company, but there is always, if one door is closed, there is always another door. Think about that. And you just need to find that door. Which door is that one? Same is my suggestion for postdocs. If you feel like this is hard for you, find out something. Don't struggle too much. There is a way. Let's see if you have more questions in the chat. Joseline, Claire, asking, Edward. Shamin, thank you mm -hmm. very much for your time. It was really good. Thank good you. Experience. And you can share my email, LinkedIn profile. If anybody want to reach out separately, I'm, I'm happy to have one-on-one or talk to anybody if there is any, any question. 
or anything they are thinking career path anything i will be happy to talk thank you very much i mean and thank, thank you all thank you. bye thank bye you. nice seeing you nice meeting everyone thank you bye and sorry about technical issue don't worry don't worry <laughs> I always have some things in the Zoom. That's a, that's a new thing as well that you have to use. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>